Hey there, I'm your host, Jeremy Burke Miller, and today we're explaining how do Transformers reproduce? Transformers, despite being robotic life forms, have always had on display human behaviors. And to be honest here, as fictional characters created by human beings, they have been quite consistent in portraying themselves as being filled with souls as well as feelings. It goes without saying that the element of love has played a massive role in the world of Transformers, helping them form emotional bonds with one another. No points for guessing that, in today's video, we will be specifically talking about how the Cybertronian race has been increasing their numbers all this while. It's going to be an interesting, in-depth analyzation of the different methods of reproduction, as well as delving into the best Transformer couples. You better be ready for this. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The different methods of reproduction. Let's get one thing straight here. Cybertronian reproduction isn't an easy thing. With the majority of the Cybertronian procreating asexually, the precise procedure which plays a significant part in the origin of the Transformers, as well as their culture, continues to remain a bit tricky. Let's begin by talking about the mechanical construction. As per the early fictional depictions, Transformers were looked upon as standard yet sophisticated robots, given the exact parts and a mechanical understanding. Anyone, for that matter, was capable of constructing a new Transformer, just like a regular machine. Once constructed, the new Transformer leaps to life as a living, fully operating individual. Now, if you remember the first Transformers animated series, not only were the Dinobots formed in this particular fashion, but this is precisely how the Constructicons had reconstructed a human city on Trypticon. Also, let's not disregard the Dinobot leader Grimlock, becoming super intelligent for a brief period and creating the Technobots, utilizing his newfound prowess. With further development of the series, this specific method was buried and, may we add, more transcendental methods started popping up. There also came a time when mechanically fractured Transformers were distinctively referred to as mindless drones. Ones that would function on a set of prearranged objectives instead of a mind that's self-aware of things. Next, we'll be talking about the Spark Infusion. With future development of the Transformers franchise, we have stories strongly stating that the Transformers weren't just robotic machines. Instead, they were fully conscious living entities. We have both Marvel Comics and the cartoon version elucidating the fact that the formation of a Transformer required the amalgamation of their corporeal form with a leading, lively force of life. One that was latter dubbed as Spark by the Beast Wars Transformers cartoon series. Further disclosed that these sparks came from a mystical object that could inject life into a Transformer. Now, if one takes a look at the Marvel comic, this mystical object was basically the Creation Matrix and its encoded life-giving program, Primal Program. It was also at the same time that the cartoon was also equated its viewers with the primeval and incredibly powerful supercomputer, Vector Sigma, one accountable for transforming Megatron's non-sentient robots into a rebellious group known as the Stunticons. It was Michael Bay's Transformers which brought in the Allspark, one from which all sparks were created and given the gift of life, even after death. We will be speaking about the resurrection next, for which it is important that we delve a little bit into the Transformers cartoon. We'll be focusing on the part where Starscream, post getting exiled from the Decepticons, was kind of dumped on an island called Guadalcanal. For those of you who are not aware of the island, Guadalcanal pretty much served as one of the primary battle locations of the Second World War. No wonder, Starscream came across a horde of broken down military vehicles and made up his mind to construct them into his own army. As part of his plan, he traveled to the Decepticon Detention Center, freed the personality components of five Decepticon political prisoners, and blasted the rest. Next, he installed those very components into the abandoned military vehicles that he came across and simply commanded them to transform. Thus emerged the Combaticons, a group comprising Brawl, Swindle, Blastoff, Vortex, and Onslaught. Speaking of budding, 
It is vital that we talk about the 1993 comic Transformers Generation 2, where it was disclosed that post the creation of the Transformers by Primus, they mainly reproduced by budding. To those of you who are wondering what method is budding, well, it's similar to mitosis, but a type of asexual reproduction which lets Transformers quickly procreate by producing a volume of animated fluid metal, but from within their bodies. This mass is next shown to separate itself from the Guardian Transformer and develop itself into a new Cybertronian. If you take a closer look into the fifth issue, you'll realize that this is more like a collective event that has other Transformers encircling the new robot, with the Transformers coming to a population level that's considered acceptable by Primus. This particular method is stopped and every trace of it is removed, but with the Cybertronian group re-establishing and restoring the process after the Ark's departure, the following generation of budded Transformers grew more and more more, less conscious and emotional, as a result of which a cloud-like black mass life form called the Swarm was created in its place. With the progress of the story, more and more popular methods of reproduction were introduced, which brings us to the biological reproduction. Now it is a known fact that the universe of the Transformers comprises male as well as female Transformers, both with the comprehension of the element of love. Well, when the question comes to them reproducing sexually, please know that this is a particular method of reproduction is deemed completely unfamiliar as compared to their mechanical way of thinking. Last but not least, we'll be talking about familial relationships. As per canonical sources, certain relationships have been pointed out. Some Transformers are seen to have siblings or appear more like twins, such as Jetfire and Jetstorm, Sideswipe and Stunstreaker, or Skids and Mudflap. The most fitting explanation for the twins is them being a product of Split Spark or Split Protoform. Also, the Beast Era had on display Maximals and Predacons instead of Autobots and Decepticons, one that has the former referring to the latter as the ancestor. Best Transformer Couples Power Glide and Astoria from Generation 1 What we have here is an interspecies couple between a Transformer and a human. The episode titled The Girl Who Loved Power Glide has Power Glide assigned with the task to protect Astoria. But even with Astoria creating all kinds of trouble for the both of them, it's pretty clear by the end of the episode that they're in love with each other. Why else would Power Glide flash his chest plate having on display an LED lighting that's in the shape of a heart? Megatronus and Solus Prime from Power of the Primes. It would be a sin not to mention the OGs of the original 13 Primes. Well, speaking of the cartoon, Megatronus mortally wounds Solus inadvertently killing her with the Requiem Blaster. Of course, he is seen to regret his actions immediately and starts thinking of a plan to get Solus back. Megatronus even goes to the whole extent of eliminating every existing Transformer, only to have Solus take matters into her own hands and pull him down into the Well of Sparks, ultimately ending both their lives in the process, releasing all collected sparks. Sea Spray and Alana from Generation 1 Okay, this should have topped our list for sure. Well, when you have a Transformer hellbent on proving to his lover that he is a lot more than just a mechanical device, and he's okay with going to the extent of even sacrificing his own life, next, his lover returns him the favor by transforming herself into a robot. You tell us, can you take the relationship lightly? We know we can't. Botanica and Rat Trap from Beast Machines. Well, what begins with the trademark fighting ends up with the duo admitting their love for each other. Well, from bickering to helping each other, and let's not forget having on display signs of affection like kissing, Botanica and Rattrap are eventually seen declaring their real feelings for each other, and giving the series a happy ending. Archie and Cliffjumper from Transformers Prime. The only regret that one has with this couple is their short-lived on-screen relationship. There are no second thoughts about Cliffjumper holding significant value in Archie's life. No wonder his death brought a huge character development to Archie. She is seen looking for vengeance and went to the whole extent of hunting down the perpetrator, aka Starscream. She would have fulfilled her destiny, but with the intervention of Bumblebee, the storyline took a different turn. And now, if one is to look at the same-sex Transformer couples, we do have quite an interesting list. Our list begins with Chrome Dome and Rewind, who are categorically shown to have the most developed relationship of all times in the whole Transformers history, right from the fights to them making it up to each other. Everything about them looked real. And then there's Anode and Lug, Drift and Ratchet, 
Cyclonius and Tailgate, followed by Knockout and Breakdown. Who amongst these couples do you think tops our list? Don't forget to share us your views in the comments section. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.